Welcome to USA News Channel. Please like and subscribe for the first get new video update from us. Thank you. The economic sanctions targeting North Korea may be starting to bite. New data shows Pyongyang is selling less to its biggest trade partner, China. Our Cha Sang-mi has more on the gloom that awaits unless the regime changes its ways. Meanwhile, the economic sanctions on Pyongyang may be starting to bite. New economic data show North Korea is selling less to its biggest trading partner, China. U.S. news website Business Insider says North Korea has fallen into a trade deficit with China worth 1.7 billion U.S. dollars. According to NK News Review, North Korea spent over $3 billion on Chinese imports last year, but sent China goods worth only $1.6 billion. Those exports are down sharply from 2013 when the North shipped China nearly $3 billion in goods. The decline is attributed to the U.S.-led international push to put maximum pressure on the regime by restricting its trade. U.S. news website Business Insider on Wednesday reported that North Korea has fallen into a 1.7 billion U.S. dollar trade deficit with China, its biggest and most important trade partner. NK News, a U.S.-based website that provides news and analysis about North Korea, also pointed out at contrasting trade figures. While North Korea spent over $3 billion on Chinese imports in 2017, it only exported $1.6 billion in goods. The North's exports last year represent a dive from 2013, when it exported nearly $3 billion in goods to China. The slump comes after the UN imposed and pushed for maximum pressure on Pyongyang a year ago by restricting its trade, especially on rare earth minerals. Hinting at some alternative source of funding, questions rise over how Pyongyang manages to operate in the face of such trade deficit. According to experts, the culprit could be the dollarization of Pyongyang's economy, where foreign currencies such as the U.S. dollar and the Japanese yen are preferred over its own banknotes. Actually, North Korea's private marketplace has a lot of foreign currencies. North Korean individuals also have some savings. So the government is using this money to continue the imports. But as soon as the cash dries out, imports will stop dramatically. The expert also said that North Korea has been searching for profits in cyber or crypto market hacking, but that activity, even when paired with other illegal acts, is not enough to sustain the regime's economy. As such, many experts are saying that North Korea's trade won't be blooming anytime soon under the ongoing sanctions that have been imposed following its sixth nuclear test last September. Cha Sang-mi, Arirang News. All right, North Korea is changing its tune, quite literally. The country's giant loudspeakers on the southern border typically blast propaganda speeches from the north into South Korea. But since the beginning of the Olympics, the regime has been playing classical music ever so loud. The unusual change comes as we learn that Kim Jong-un could be going broke. New reports suggest his cash flow is expected to run dry by October if these very tough international sanctions continue to cripple the North's economy. We've gotten a tax bill, imagine a tax scam that gives 83% of the benefits to the top 1% in our country. How could that be? 83 million families in our country, according to this bill, will pay more uh, taxes. That gives one and a half trillion dollars in tax break to corporate America and with interest payments will take the debt, the national debt, over two trillion dollars more. At least five Democrats now distancing themselves from Pelosi over her take on the tax plan, including DNC Vice Chairman Keith Ellison. All right, the Navy offering new incentives, hoping to meet fleet demands and reduce the amount of overworked sailors. First term service members are now allowed to bring their families overseas if they stay longer on tour in Japan, Guam or in Spain. Sailors can also extend their tours in exchange for preferred housing and guaranteed shore duty at their next post. Is space travel a sign of toxic masculinity? The latest out of this world claim you're not going to believe. Another welcome development in improving inter Korean ties. Once again, a high level delegation from up north will be crossing over this time for the closing ceremony of the Winter Games. They are expected to also hold meetings with President Moon Jae in during their stay. Jim Young Gil has our top story. 
It will be led by a senior official from the country's ruling Workers' Party. Kim Yeon-chol directs a department overseeing inter-Korean affairs. He is a former chief of the North Korean military's reconnaissance bureau. He's also suspected of having been involved in the sinking of a South Korean warship and the shelling of an island in 2010. A South Korean presidential official says that Kim is on the sanctions list both there and in the United States, but the government will allow him to visit. President Moon Jae-in is expected to meet Kim during the three-day visit, which begins on Sunday. Earlier this month, the group that included the North Korean leader's sister visited the South for the opening ceremony of the Games. During that visit, the delegation proposed further talks between Moon and Kim Jong-un in Pyongyang. The visit captured a lot of attention and was seen by some as a symbol of a thaw in relations on the Korean peninsula. President Trump made the announcement on Wednesday. Ivanka will lead a delegation that includes White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders and the commander of U.S. forces in South Korea. She's scheduled to meet with South Korean President Moon Jae-in when she arrives in Seoul on Friday and will then have dinner at the presidential palace. The opening ceremony drew a lot of attention as people watched to see if there would be any interaction between the U.S. vice president and the North Korean delegation. U.S. officials say a meeting was planned, but the North abruptly canceled it at the last minute. They say there were no plans, there are no plans for Ivanka to have any substantial meetings with the North while in South Korea. CNN cited White House officials on Tuesday who reported that Ivanka Trump will be leading the U.S. presidential delegation at the closing ceremony of the upcoming Winter Olympics in South Korea. The report said Ivanka was asked to attend the closing ceremony by her father and the U.S. Olympic Committee. It also said that President Trump himself will attend some of the events to represent his country and that additional members of the delegation will be announced soon. Following the news, the presidential office of Korea said that Ivanka's visit is yet to be confirmed. An official from Cheongwadae said that Seoul had not received any official announcement from the U.S. yet and that the two sides are holding close discussions on the matter. A diplomatic expert says that if confirmed, Trump's decision to send his daughter would be a show of support by his administration for the South Korean government. The news of uh, Ivanka Trump uh, attending the closing ceremony of the Olympics is a signal that uh, the United States government is showing solidarity with the South Korean government uh, in making the Olympics a successful uh, turning point uh, in terms of uh, bringing peace and stability to the peninsula. The expert said that at the same time, this also reflects President Trump's intention to limit speculation about the possibility of using the Olympics to hold talks with North Korea on denuclearization. Uh, if uh, no United States government was uh, serious about uh, using the uh, Pyeongchang Olympics as an uh, opportunity to establish a channel of dialogue with uh, North Korea, uh, I think the uh, U.S. government would have sent uh, uh, somebody who's uh, more specialized in the field of diplomacy or foreign policy. North Korea has informed South Korea on Thursday that it will send an eight-member high-level delegation led by Kim Yong-chol, the vice chair of North Korea's ruling party's Central Committee, to attend the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics closing ceremony. The delegation will also include Lee Sun-gwan, the head of the North Agency in charge of inter-Korean affairs, as well as six supporting staff. South Korea's Unification Ministry said the delegation will arrive in the South on February 25th using the Western Land Route for a three-day visit. Seoul's Unification Ministry issued a statement saying the government thinks the visit of the North Korean delegation will help improve inter-Korean relations and represent a huge leap into the regime's denuclearization. The South Korean presidential office of Chongade said President Moon Jae-in will naturally meet with the North Korean delegation at the closing ceremony. A Chongade official also said President Moon could meet with the North Korean officials for formal talks later in the week over establishing peace and improving South-North ties. North Korea already sent a high-level delegation on February 9th for the opening ceremony of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics headed by Kim Yong-nam, Pyongyang ceremonial head of state, and Kim Yo-jong, the younger sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Kim Yong-gil, Arirang News. Oh